So this is like your company's brain, but it's accessible by everyone. Hey developers, welcome to GitHub Checkout, your inside look at the latest GitHub features and updates that level up your workflow. I'm Andrea Griffiths, Senior Developer Advocate. Today, we're exploring something that's sure to change how you organize, share, and access institutional knowledge at your company. We're diving into the world of GitHub Copilot Spaces. Joining us is Kelly Henkel from the GitHub Copilot Spaces team, who's here to show us exactly how this new feature works and why it's going to change how teams share expertise. Welcome, Kelly. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to talk to you about Copilot Spaces today since it's something that we're so passionate about here at GitHub. Okay, so first of all, what is Copilot Spaces? Yeah, so Copilot Spaces are a brand new way of working with your code base and any context that is available at your company. They make it really easy to organize and share information about either a collection of code or maybe some documentation or maybe even more abstract information like a transcript from a code base deep dive that you did with a subject matter expert a couple weeks ago. Basically, the way that it works is you can create a space that contains a whole bunch of different contexts. You can chat with just that context, get extremely high quality results due to a difference in the way that we're managing some of our contexts. And then you can even share it with teammates in order to build out a really nice inner sourcing information model for information at your company. That sounds amazing. So this is like your company's brain, but it's accessible by everyone. And what type of content can you actually set up in your space? We use spaces for all kinds of things here at GitHub. We use them for information sharing. We use them for defining a part of the code base that you maybe need to ask questions about or communicate about with a teammate. So basically when you create a space, you can add some things to it. You can give it a name. I could describe it so that my teammates who are discovering this space from our organization wide spaces can understand what it should be used for. And then you can set something like custom instructions that provide some context about what this space is and how responses should be generated. And then you can add all kinds of different attachments. So you can add files from one of your repositories. If I go to something like AIR, which is a repo that I'm building for a little website project that I'm working on, you know, I can add my components to this. I can add HTML. I can add documentation if it's stored in here. If it's in a GitHub repo, then you can add it into your space as context. You can also add things that are outside of a repo. So right now we support adding text file content. And this is really the greatest hack out there because you can put anything into here. And so we've used this to put Slack threads, video transcripts, oh, wow. like all kinds of examples, like sample code, really anything can go in here. So use this as creatively as you want. If you just need the model to know about something and it's available in text content. And then we are working right now on the ability to also add issues and pull requests. And so that should be launching very soon if it's not already out by the time you see this video. Basically what this space will do is once you've added all of your contacts, then you can uh, share it with your teammates if you assign it to be owned by an organization. And so if you made this available to something like GitHub and you saved it, then I can go ahead and change the access model so that all members of GitHub can use this space and ask questions about how this space works. So this space is the accessibility space here at GitHub. And this was put together by Catherine, who's one of our subject matter experts here on accessibility. She has attached all kinds of documentation. Like you can look at this and there's a dozen different documents here. And you can imagine that going through and learning about accessibility for the first time and the requirements that you need to go through in order to get mm. certified was very overwhelming. And a lot of people wound up just going straight to Catherine and Slack instead of trying to self-service answering questions through docs. And so Catherine created a space for accessibility and this accessibility space just contains all the documents. And so you can ask questions about things like what is mass C compliance and how do I get certified for my new feature spaces? 
And the responses are very high quality because even though these files have been pulled together from all sorts of different places, they're pulled together, I think, from multiple repos and certainly from all over within the GitHub repo, it's just looking at this collection of information as part of generating an answer. And so you get this really incredible high quality grounding of response, almost like Copilot is a subject matter expert in accessibility. And so Catherine has taken this link and she's pinned this to Slack. She sent this to Hubbers. You know, this is part of the when you file an accessibility review work item, then it links to this space so you can get some basic questions answered. It's a really great way to communicate information that is stored inside a really complex documentation that would otherwise be a little overwhelming to dig through. Then the other thing is that I can also attach local context that I might be working on at conversation time. And so let's say that I am working on a new feature and I need to understand whether I've met accessibility compliance, I could attach that um, directly from a repository and get some actual guidance about work that I might be doing. I think the most powerful use cases for spaces is that you can define a collection of code that corresponds to a task that you need to do frequently. Like here at GitHub, everybody needs to add data dog logging before we go out the door. And so what you can do is you can basically define a space that corresponds to how to add logging. And we've seen some of our engineers have done that. And it contains examples of how to implement it and examples of what good logs look like. And then you can use that to actually help you generate and scaffold out logging for the first time. What other ways are we using it internally? So this is a very meta space. This is the space that we have about spaces. I know, very meta. And so we've attached all kinds of things, like we've attached all of the code that corresponds to spaces. And then we've also attached a whole bunch of video transcripts, basically um, from a deep dive that our subject matter experts, myself and a couple of our engineers did in order to oh. answer questions about how spaces works. And so one of the coolest parts about spaces is that you can combine something like code context along with context that is not code and answer Answer questions about both of them together. And so if you go into this particular space, and this is spared, shared with all GitHub employees, so all GitHubers can go in here and they can ask questions like, what are some of the strengths of Copilot spaces? What's next on the roadmap? How does the system work under the hood? And they can get answers that are grounded in not just the video call transcripts that we did, where we talked about some of the architectural decisions we made, but also the actual latest state of the code. And all the files in here are always kept up to date with the latest state of your repo. And so as we're adding things every single day to Copilot spaces, like all of these files are getting updated and people who are answering questions or asking questions with the space, they always get the latest information out of what spaces are and how they work, which is very cool. And so because this is only taking the context that is grounded on, then I'm not having hallucinations or security concerns about my information being out in the open for someone else to see or a model just going bananas and making some stuff up. That's right. Yeah, it's extremely high quality results for the context that you've added to the space. And so you can be rest assured that like, let's say you're working at a large legacy company and maybe you have something like your own internal test framework that has never been published publicly. And so spaces kind of work around that by allowing you to define the context that you want and really allowing you to just one time set up and specify any information that the model needs to know, to know about, and then you can share it. You can share it with everyone at your organization and you can evangelize the knowledge. And what if I need to revoke access to this? Yeah, no problem. You can just change it back to no access and it will get removed. So Kelly, who can use spaces right now? Anyone can use spaces as long as you have a Copilot license. So that includes Copilot free all the way up to our enterprise customers. Right now, Copilot spaces do follow the uh, standard entitlement model where they don't count against entitlement usage as long as you're using it with the base model. But if you are using them with a premium model, then uh, they will, depending on the model, consume entitlements. So excited for everyone really to start using it, but what do you hope this product becomes? So I think spaces are the future of subject matter expertise. 
within your company. They're going to be extremely powerful once we have IDE support, which is coming soon and in the pipeline right now. Um, because what you're going to be able to do is you will be able to have somebody who is a subject matter expert in how to do a particular task or how a particular system works, how to write a test case, for example, what the definition of done looks like, maybe how to make something secure, how to make something accessible. And when they create a space that contains examples of that code or examples of what good looks like, best practices, you'll be able to take that collection of information and bring it with you in the IDE so that somebody who's not as familiar with, let's say, accessibility can just go ahead and ask Copilot edits to help them make their most recent workspace changes accessibility compliant without having to get that caught much later during the review process or even after the feature has shipped. We have a public discussion post where there's feedback welcomed and we're taking requests every single day off of there. So if there's something you'd like to see added or changed in spaces, please let us know. We're all engaging on that. And then if you are a member of a business or enterprise and you have feedback, please also do work with your admins and work with your GitHub contacts. We would love to get in contact with you and learn about what we can do to better service your scenarios. Thank you so much for coming by and showing us GitHub Copilot Spaces. I'm super excited for all of you to try it. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you so much. And that was your first look at GitHub Copilot Spaces. What do you think? Not just organizing content, but multiplying subject matter expertise across your entire organization, from accessibility compliance to complex data queries and even onboarding new team members. Amazing, AI power. Drop a comment below and let us know how you're using GitHub Copilot Spaces. And if this was helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe to this channel so you never miss another feature update or dev tip. Push the changes to main and we'll catch you in the next release.